Well, doing the previous video and showing how to mix your audio in Audacity for your podcast, it brought up a few other things that you can do just to make sure your audio sounds truly professional and um, is going to sound very, very sexy. Um, if, <laughs> if sexy is a word for uh, an audio podcast, uh, but also to make sure it's in the right format for podcasting. So uh, so that it's not too large in size, your file isn't too large in size, uh, but also maintains some level of quality. So Alison went away and did her homework and she mixed the podcast. And I'll just open up that file. And it was Donkey Pod Life. So we're going to open that. And one of the things I realised I should have mentioned beforehand, actually a couple of things, basically talking about levels when you're recording. Now the best way to get a good quality sounding podcast where you don't have to mess too much with sound levels and do all the things I'm going to show you next is to make sure when you're recording that those levels are fairly even and they don't peak. Now what do I mean by not peaking? Well up here, if I was to record up here and you'll see it when I play back as well you can see that the green levels are or the levels remain in the green if they get into the red then that's going to be too loud and you'll you might get some distortion you'll certainly get peaking um, which is where this wave level will, will go too high and too low uh, on he on the screen. You don't want that. So anytime you're recording it would be really great if you anyway kept your recording level between around the minus 6 to the minus 12 area. If the green doesn't go higher than that, certainly if it starts to go into the red you're recording too high. Likewise you don't want it too soft either. So if it goes too far down here you want to sort of boost your levels a little bit. So that's one thing you should think about and that's pretty important because I think anything you do once you've mixed your podcast to try and change the levels or improve the quality is never going to be as good as starting off with a good quality piece of audio. The second thing that she maybe sh would have wanted to do before she mixed the podcast is to change the amplification levels. So if for example this part of the audio was a lot louder than this here, than the intro or the outro, and actually it is quite a bit larger than the uh, higher than the outro. Um, it's kind of on a par with this bit where the spoken part of the the intro is. Um, you can easily reduce it. Now you should really do this before you mix it, because the minute I reduce this, I'm also reducing the the music under it. So I'm starting to mess with another track that has now been mixed in. So we don't really want to do that. But if I was to do it, just so I show you, you want to go to Effect, go to Amplify, and if you want to make it louder, you add a positive number. If you want to make it softer, you add a negative number. So I would go for, say, just test it out on a minus one. Click OK. OK and you should see that slightly reduce. There you go, it did slightly reduce there. So that's how you do the amplification. So we've done the amplification, that's one way to deal with levels. And the next thing is once you've got your final mixed podcast, you can put some compression on it. And by compressing it, you're essentially evening out the volume. So your um, quieter bits will, will even out closer to your louder bits, they will reduce slightly to your quieter bits. So it's just um, a very clever way of evening it all out. So I'm just going to highlight the whole thing by just left clicking on here. Then we go to Effect and we go to Compressor. Now this is set at minus 12 dB. A good range, and you again may want to experiment with this, a good range is around minus 10 to minus 16. I'm not going to go into huge technical details about things, but again, as I said, if you play around with it a little bit, uh, you can move that up and down. You'll see it changing there on the screen. But yes, play around with it. Minus 10 to minus 16 is fairly good, but I'm going to leave it at minus 12. The other thing is here is it says it normalizes to 0 dB after compressing. Now I'll go into that shortly. I'm actually going to untick this. You may 
decide you want to do it all in one go compress and normalize but I wanted to show you how to normalize it separately anyway uh, so you've got a bit more control over it so we're just going to click that and say yes we want to do that dynamic range compressor you're not going to see a huge difference but you may hear a difference you would the the poorer the levels are in terms of um, you know if you've got a real mixture of levels the greater the effect of the compression will be so if you've recorded fairly well you shouldn't see a huge difference but that's how to compress and then the final thing we're going to do is to normalize the audio which again kind of works on the volumes but in a slightly different way so I've highlighted it all we're going to go to effect and we're going to go to normalize and this normalizes to minus three which is a, well, it's a pretty good place to to normalize it you can do it to zero by doing the all-in-one um, that I showed you before with the compression and the normalization but for various reasons you may find that the zero DB doesn't do what you want it to do which is why I wanted to show you how to normalize it this way as well and if you really wanted to play around with the normalization and um, the, the different levels and the options there are separate programs you can download I believe freeware ones that will also normalize the audio and you can play around with the figures a bit more there but we're going to just click OK for this one and again it will be one of those things that you want to test out see if it sounds better or not okay now the final thing I forgot to mention is um, making sure you're exporting it as the right size mp3 so we're going to go to um, is it project no we're going to go to edit and preferences now why might you want to change this well with podcasts because it's mainly online it's a digital format uh, the size of files can be an issue depending on you know who you're hosting with they may limit the amount of bandwidth you're allowed each month or if you're hosting it yourself you don't want to have too you know your files too big because you are going to you may end up having to pay for extra bandwidth if it's too big so you want to export as a small enough file that you've not got too large a file size but at the same time maintain enough quality for listening online or listening through mp3 players in terms of a a voiced podcast where it's mainly just voice with maybe um, a little bit of music at the beginning and end then I would suggest sample rate 44 100 file formats though you want to go here mp3 export setup bitrate 256 is very good quality um, for something that's just spoken word it doesn't need to be that that high I would go for 128 or 96 for a very long podcast I would probably go for, well in fact I do for the SWBM podcast we go in 96 uh, because those podcasts tend to be very long if you want to slightly better quality for a short podcast then go for 128 if it's a music podcast then you may want to raise that some more to keep the quality of the music but we'll go for 96 and we'll click OK and then we're going to export it as an mp3 so export as mp3 and we're going to call it donkey pod life enhanced and we'll just see the difference in the sound which I shall put on the blog post I'll leave that to export it will export and save itself in that folder and as I said check out audiblemarketing.com and on the blog post where I put this video I shall also have the two examples and we can see if we can hear a huge difference I personally don't think there will be a major difference between these two because they were recorded and mixed in, with fairly good levels already but you know we'll just double check because there will be some difference that you may be able to hear